In a recent episode we did of NFL questions from subscribers, somebody asked, why do Ravens fans feel like they have to defend Lamar Jackson so much? Well, this is why. Yeah, this feels like a dream. And you know just what I mean. You see my boy, he like gotta made it, how to made it. Boy, he's a fan and he like the Ravens, like the Ravens. And you know just what I mean. YouTube team keep it clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and Jeremy Fowler who Ravens fans are extremely familiar with now uh, he was on Glenn Clark radio and he had some very interesting things to say and this comes after a few days ago he had some very interesting things to say on TV about one Ravens Lamar Jackson and what he had been hearing around the league that this could be the year that teams figure him out before we get into it, I got to say a special shout out to all the Team Keep It Clean patrons. Appreciate y'all. Thank you all. If you want to become a patron, you can go to patreon.com slash engravingvids. If you don't want to become a patron, you can stay right where you at because that's fine either way. <laughs> I love y'all Team Keep It Clean and let's just dive into this. So, Jeremy Fowler, of course, uh, a few days back, he was on TV and Ryan Clark gave him the that and and it was deserving because he said this is the year that a lot of people feel like they might finally figure out Ravens quarterback Lamar Jackson and again they've been saying that ever since he came into the league and something that I said a few days ago and I got to repeat it now why is it that the focus is always on figuring out Lamar Jackson why does everybody just want to figure out Lamar Jackson why does everybody have to figure out Lamar Jackson why is he pretty much the only quarterback where it's like, all right, we, we got to figure him out. We're going to figure him out. This league is going to figure him out. It's like there's this, this spotlight on him. But is the league figuring out Josh Allen? No. Is the league figuring out Patrick Mahomes? No. Is the league figuring out Baker? No. Are they figuring out Brady? No. Are they figuring out Aaron Rodgers? No. And you could create narratives for each of them, all of them being figured out. You can go to the Super Bowl last year. All right, we figured out how to uh, stop Patrick Mahomes. We, we figured out how to take him out of a game. Because you saw how that Super Bowl went. You can go to Rodgers. You can say, oh, the, the league figured him out because every time now that he reaches the NFC Championship, he gets there, but then everything falls apart. Oh, the league figured him out, but you don't hear none of that. You don't hear, you only hear about figuring out when it comes to one, Lamar Jackson. But anyway, let's get into some of the quotes that, Glenn Clark radio dropped yesterday via Twitter. The first one was from Jeremy Fowler. Is Baltimore in a point of stagnation as a result of their passing struggles? We'll see. So stag being stagnant is when you're not moving anywhere. So it that, that's that's a good question. That's a really good question. And, and that one is a legitimate one. Hey, uh, the Ravens passing game, we know that it needs improvement. It's not that the Ravens can't pass the ball. It's, hey, when the Ravens have to pass the ball, and, and can they win passing the ball? Can they come back passing the ball? Well, they've proven all of that. But their passing game, it definitely needs improvement, and, and more so with the involvement of different players, especially in the playoffs. But throughout the regular season would definitely help. So come playoffs, those other guys can be ready. So again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. So that first quote, cool, no problem. But then he also said Lamar Jackson was tied for eighth in the QB ranking after polling 50 players. So no, after polling 50 players, coaches, and executives around the league. So they asked 50 people around the league, where would you rank Lamar Jackson? And after those votes... He came in eighth. Okay, cool. Eighth best player in the league, according to those 50 people and his foot, those 50 players, coaches, executives. Cool. No problem. But then he followed that up and said, a veteran offensive player said, see, and this is where, this is where it gets a little funny because we're not name dropping. If, if people really feel this way, why don't they name drop? Why don't you stand behind your comment? Why don't you stand behind your statement? But anyway, he said, a veteran offensive player said, people are figuring him out a little bit. That doesn't make it wrong or right. It's just these are things people say. So, again, 
<laughs> people are figuring out Lamar Jackson. That's what this veteran offensive player who remains nameless said. But again, why, why, why is it just him that the league has to try to figure out? Why is it just him that the league has to try to go after? I wonder why. Anyway, uh, he also says some of those factors are not on Lamar Jackson. It's an offense that's sort of has some wing T principles, high school offense. Uh, he has not had the proper guys on the outside. Now, he might with Rashad Bateman. It's not like he can't make all the throws. So with that, um, yes, uh, we certainly could use some improvement uh, in the area of wide receiver. Um, but again, I think one of the biggest improvements is just how you use what you have. That's one of the biggest parts right there. Um, now, last year, give Greg Roman a pass on Duvernay and Prochet because there was no offseason. But this year, it got to be all systems go. Everybody who you have, Watkins, Hollywood, uh, Boykin, Prochet, Duvernay, Bateman when he comes back, Tylen Wallace, Mark Andrews, uh, Josh Oliver, Nick Boyd, obviously the running backs, J.K. Dobbins, and Gus Edwards and whoever else makes it. You got to use your weapons. You got to use your guys. It's so important that Ravens use what they've got. Use what you have. But anyway, so that's cool. No problem with that statement. Moving on. Here we go. So there are still some major questions as to whether or not Lamar Jackson can make accurate enough passes to win in the playoffs. We're still, we still, we, we come full circle. We're back to this again. We're back to this yet again. Lamar Jackson has continuously put up great numbers as far as passing touchdowns. I think he's like, over the past couple of years, he's in like the top, the top five, definitely the top ten. But I think he might be even in the top five in passing touchdowns. And it's like they still continue to question his passing. Is he the best passer in the world? No, he's not. Does he need to be? No, he doesn't. Has he shown that he can throw the football? Yes, he can. But it seems as if a lot of people in the media, they still want to try to run with this narrative. They still want to try to create this narrative. And the, the worst part about this whole thing is that people are going to listen. People are going to listen because he has a check mark next to his name, because he's on ESPN, because he's on TV, because he's on radio. People are going to listen and they're going to be like, oh, OK, he's certified. So this is true. But it, it seems like the, the, the media, they just do not want to accept Lamar Jackson as one of the top quarterbacks in the league and it actually and I even take that back it seems like the the media does not want to accept Lamar Jackson as a quarterback in this league why are we still having the same conversations three years later and two years after after MVP and even last year he still had a good season why are we still having these same conversations it's, it just it blows my mind that it seems like a lot of people just really don't want to move forward. They don't want to move forward. And they want to continue to move the goalposts back and forth, back and forth. There's still some major questions as to whether or not Lamar Jackson can make accurate enough passes to win. So if you cut it off right there, it would already be shut down. Because we know that he is a proven winner. Proven winner in this league. At every single level, he's proven that he is a winner. But then they added that, oh, to win in the playoffs. Well, did he not do that last year? For the first time, he did it. He did it. He got that monkey off his back. And now the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, as a unit, they got their first win in the playoffs. Now, we of course hope that continues, but this, this narrative is 
it's not going to go away like we know already, but it shouldn't even be here. But let's continue. He also said, it's not fair to expect him to have that same year as 2019 every year. He is, without question, a top 7 to 10 quarterback. If you win an MVP at age 22, the expectation is he is going to be one of the best. And I don't think a lot of teams in the league view him that way. So, yes, Lamar Jackson is a victim of his own success. He, again, regular season, the guy has done nothing but win. Win, win, win. The Ravens and Lamar Jackson, regular season, nothing but win. And, and the way that they've won has been a beautiful thing. They have probably one of the, one of the most efficient games in the NFL. Are they going to lead the league in uh, passing yards? Are they ever going to lead that? No, that's not them. They're not going to lead that. They never led the league in passing yards with Flacco. They definitely ain't do it with Bowler. They ain't do it with nobody else. They're not going to do it with Lamar Jackson. That's not their style. But as far as efficiency, oh, that's them all day. That's them all day. And efficiency is actually a lot more valuable than the total yards. But that's a whole nother conversation. But anyway, it's not fair to expect him to have that same year as 2019 every year. Of course not, because that was the MVP season. We don't expect him to play. I mean, he's like the MVP of the Ravens. But as far as 2019, we don't expect that every single year. And again, when you are at the top, the only place that you can go is down from there. Um, and But Lamar Jackson's down. <laughs> it's, that would be a lot uh, up for a lot of quarterbacks. Minus the passing yards. But as far as the touchdown and interception ratio and the wins, which is the most important thing, yeah, that would be up for most quarterbacks. But anyway, he, he is without question a top 7 to 10 quarterback. And if you win an MVP at age 22, the expectation is he is going to be one of the best. And I don't think a lot of teams in the league view him that way. Mm, interesting. Interesting. A lot of teams in the league don't view him that way. Now, it, it all depends on what exactly what he's saying here. Because if he's saying that a lot of teams don't view him as a top seven to ten quarterback in the league, mm, I would beg to differ. But, hey, I'm not in the league. But when, whenever you hear a, a, a player, whenever you hear a player speak about Lamar Jackson, a player, somebody who's out there on the field putting on a helmet, putting on cleats, whenever you hear them speak about Lamar Jackson, they are always amazed at what this guy can do. And Lamar Jackson has received praise from people who are considered the best quarterbacks in the league, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. They acknowledge that this guy can make every play, especially Aaron Rodgers, and we know he can throw. He acknowledged that Lamar Jackson can make every single throw, and he said he's been doing it since college days. Aaron Rodgers says he know he can throw. But it seems to be the media, the, it's the media that really doesn't want people to view Lamar Jackson as a quarterback and as a top quarterback but let's continue he also said about the Ravens wide receivers I do think they will improve because of the weapons they have around him Watkins Bacon I'm, I said Bacon I must be hungry Watkins Bateman Hollywood Brown is still a mystery to a lot of people around the league as to what he actually is this one is I, I, I don't feel like he's a mystery. Um, I could feel how people who may not watch every single Hollywood Brown game could view him sort of as a mystery, as they don't know uh, what he's fully capable of. And I, again, with Hollywood, I, I said it before and I'll say it again and I will continue to say it because I believe it. If the Ravens use Hollywood in the regular season like they use Hollywood in the playoffs, this guy would be one of the top receivers in the league. I guarantee if they use him the same way, they use him in the playoffs. Because you see, in the playoffs, they have him doing so many different things. But regular season, all right, Hollywood, go. And that's pretty much it. But if they use him like they in the, in the regular season, like they do in the playoffs, have him in motion and all that, have him catching pass in the backfield, they have him doing so much stuff in the playoffs. If they use him like that regular season, this dude, I guarantee you he will go off. Guaranteed. 
So we'll see how he does this season and how they do this season. Now, uh, this part. The question that other teams have is if they get behind, can Lamar Jackson throw 40 to 50 times to win the game? That's not realistic to expect they won't have to play from behind ever. So, this is probably the cringiest part of the entire interview. The cringiest quote from this entire interview um, because it's just the regurgitating of the same thing over and over and it's like people they, they want to find something and they want to try to create something that they think sounds logical the question that other teams have is if the Ravens get behind can Lamar Jackson throw 40 to 50 times to win the game now first off usually when a quarterback if a quarterback's throwing 40 to 50 times in a game that's usually never good it's usually never a good sign because that shows, one, and again, numbers don't tell the whole story, but 40 to 50 times, that's a lot of throws. But that shows that, one, your, your defense is not playing good. That can also show that your quarterback is not playing good. That can show that you are behind. That can show that you are extremely one-dimensional in whatever game you're throwing 40 to 50 times in. You are extremely one-dimensional. You have absolutely no run game whatsoever. 40 to 50 times. So that is just garbage. It's garbage because that that can be applied to any single quarterback in the league. If you're throwing 40 to 50 times in a game, it's usually not a good thing. It's usually not. That means somebody, some area of the team is slacking heavy. Heavy. So... Anyway, the question that other teams have is if they get behind, if the Ravens get behind, can Lamar throw 40 to 50 times to win the game? That's not realistic to expect that the Ravens won't have to play from behind ever. So, again, more regurgitating of the same thing. There was that narrative that people said a couple years ago, and they, they, it came up last year as well. It, the, the, the narrative was, can the Ravens, play from behind can they win a game where they end up being down by one score or multiple scores can they do it they've done that already they've done it in regular season and they've done it in the playoffs but since it's Lamar Jackson we have to still say the same thing even though those narratives have been shut down already and again to this this notion where these executives and these mysterious players, these mysterious offensive veteran players who remain nameless, this notion to where they, they always have to bring up, oh, what if the Ravens have to play from behind? <laughs> then what's going to happen? What if any team has to play from behind? What's going to happen? Well, you got to come back and win. No team wants to be behind. No team goes into the game thinking, oh, man, uh, <laughs> You know what? Let's get ready to get behind on this other team so we can make a comeback. No, you want to jump out to a lead. You want to jump out to a big score. You want to jump out ahead of any team that you play because it makes it easier for everybody. It creates less pressure for everybody. But, oh, no. Since it's Lamar Jackson, what, what if the Ravens and Lamar Jackson get behind in the game? Can he throw them to a win? Can he lead them to a victory? Remember, they said that a couple years ago. They said that. What, what, what happens if that happens? And, and, uh, and he did it in the regular season. But then they changed it. They were like, okay, all right. Okay, so the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, they've come back from being down in the regular season. All right, let's, let's flip this. Let, 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 let's change this. Because we want to use and we want to push the same narrative. But at the same time, we, uh, mm, this is tough. This is tough. All right. Oh, okay, okay. Got it, got it, got it. So, because he's, he's 0-2 in the playoffs right now. Ha! All right, we got it, y'all. We got it. New narrative. Same narrative, but new scenario. Lamar Jackson and those Baltimore Ravens, they can't come back from being down in the playoffs. 
<laughs> hey, we're going to get them, Chuck, with this one. Guarantee. Watch this. <laughs> they can't do it. So then what happened in the playoffs against the Titans? And not only them being down in the playoffs, but it, the narrative was the Ravens can't come back from being down multiple scores in the playoffs. So it was a triple whammy because, again, one, the Ravens can't come back from being down. Then, oh, the Ravens can't come back from being down multiple scores. Then it was the Ravens can't come back from being down by multiple scores in the playoffs. Triple whammy. What did Lamar Jackson and those Baltimore Ravens do against the Titans in the playoff game last year? The score was 10-0. Last time I checked. Last time I checked. Let me know if my math is wrong. But... 10 would be multiple scores. The second game against the Titans was a playoff game. And what did the Ravens do? They came out the victors. So the Ravens, they shut that narrative down. They shut it down. So now the narrative has changed. It's been adjusted. Uh, and, uh, oh, speaking of adjustments, that's like, that's like saying that's something that's Lamar Jackson can't do. But the, the league can adjust to Lamar, but Lamar can't adjust to the league, according to the media. According to the media. But I close with this. Um, this is always going to be a thing. And again, when people ask that question, why do you guys feel like you have to defend Lamar Jackson for what, man? This is why. Because so many lies and so many narratives and so much false information gets put out there about Lamar Jackson. When, when somebody, whether you know somebody personally or not, but definitely when you know them personally. If you know them and you know a lot about them, you know about their character, you know about things that they've done in their lives and whatnot. And you, you hear somebody else speaking about this person that you know and they're just giving out all this false information all these lies, then that can upset you. That can infuriate you. That can just make you feel like, why, why are you lying about this person? Everything that you're saying is not true. You're, you're lying. You're telling fibs, stories, fiction. These are tales. Now, do we all know Lamar Jackson personally? No, we don't. And are we infuriated? I'm not. I know some of y'all are, though, because I know, boy. <laughs> but so many people, again, since it's being put out there in the media, so many people take everything the media says as truth. They take everything that every analyst says as the real deal. And when you actually know what the real deal is and then you hear fake stuff, you got to shut it down. Team, keep it clean. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. Shout out to Graven.